This Death Valley crowd has been getting ready and hyped for this one. And a rivalry like this is what makes college football great. Yeah, the tradition and the history, but right here, right now, there's great intensity. This is why these guys came to these schools to play in games like this. As we'll see the number five team in the country, the Ole Miss Rebels, taking on the 13th ranked team in the land, the LSU Tigers. 3A Sports College Football. I'm Chris Fowler here in the booth with Kirk Herbstreit. I think we've talked long enough, Kirk. Let's get this game going. Kickoff team on the field getting set now. And here's the return from inside the five. Solid job by the coverage team. They bring him down at the 16. So the Ole Miss Rebels offense is going to get the chance to start this game off. Well, Kirk, you can just feel the emotion, the intensity of this rivalry game right now. Well, one thing we know is you work year-round for a rivalry game, and now it's right before your eyes. Let's see how these guys play today. Out of the shotgun, he hands it off. Great offenses are able to stay ahead of the chains, and runs like that on first down are exactly what I'm talking about. Now you have a lot that you can call here on this second down. The Rebels hustle to the line to run the hurry up. Same tailback, another carry. They tackle him behind the line, a loss of four. Boy, you'd love to see a few more yards here to give yourself a better chance on third down. Now, here early in this game, we get a big third down to see if this offensive line can keep the pressure off the quarterback. It's early, but this crowd is fired up. Listen to this noise here. This is going to be tough for the visitors today. Let's it go quickly. Oh, the pass is picked off. And that's a solid return after the interception. Nice job by this defense jumping on that football to come up with the interception. And not exactly how this quarterback envisioned this game starting. His very first throw of the game, he puts into traffic and he costs his team in a big way. Great spot to start this drive for the offense. Here comes the handoff. Five-yard gain, so it's second and five. Quarterback now all alone in the backfield. Dropping back, it's Nussmeyer. And the pass is complete to the tight end. But a huge hit by the linebacker. What a tackle. LSU now operating in the red zone. They're going to throw for it on third and short. Finds a man to the left. Big catch downfield. Tackle made quickly, but the game moves the ball to the six, first and goal. Oh, I love it. Keep the kicker on the sideline. This offense knows when you're in the red zone, you got to come away with six. Great play to keep this drive moving. The offense knocking on the door here with a first and goal. Using the ground game here, tailback has the handoff. And he'll make it into the end zone. Touchdown, Bayou Bengals. Wow, that is an impressive start, Kirk. In an emotional game like this, to be so efficient, to click like that early, is impressive. Well, it's very impressive and a great way to start for this team because all the buildup and all the hype, now you can just settle in and play your game. See if they can convert the point after. He 
PAT makes it 7 0. The kickoff team on the field now as they get set to send this one away. Fields it just outside the goal line. And he stopped at the 19. Good job by the coverage team. And the powerful Ole Miss offense is back out on the field. This offense trying to bounce back the last possession and then in a pick. They're going to run it. They stop him right at the 24. And the Rebels come to the line to run the hurry up. From the shotgun, here's an inside give. That's a nice tackle there by the senior. And remember, the last time these teams met, it came right down to the wire. Well, Chris, there's so many great rivalry games that we all look forward to every single year. But with these two teams, it just always seems to be a tight matchup. So a very makeable third down for this offense from the 26-yard line. They'll try to move the chains here on the ground. Tackled at the 32, that's enough for a first down. Teams are getting more and more creative with how they run their counter plays. Gone are the days of everyone under center running the counter tray. Now you're seeing it modernized. We'll see how many different versions they'll run today. And the Rebels will line up on first and ten. And now the handoff. Picks up two, so it's second and eight. No huddle now for the offense. It's a shotgun run call. He's brought down, but not before the game to the 42-yard line. Offense looking to convert on third and short from the 42. Can they make the yardage or face a tricky fourth down decision? They're going to run it. Matt gets the carry. They tackle him at the 48, but it's enough for a new first down. The Rebels are moving quickly down the field. to the back running left they tackle him behind the line a loss of four Chris great job here by this defense they're trying to bounce this to the outside take advantage of his speed in the backfield but no chance at all the defensive speed building a diagnose to play blows it up getting set here's second down out of the shotgun he'll hand it off and a decent gain there before the defense brings him down. I really like to see the counter mixed in there with your base concepts to keep the defense honest. Now, they didn't burst a big run, but if you keep mixing it in as the game progresses, you might catch the defense over pursuing. And the Rebels will crank up the tempo. On third down, he drops to throw. Doesn't hold on. Good hit by the DB. Now it brings up fourth down. Whoa, you talk about a big hit there. I think this guy holds on to this football at a critical third down if this linebacker doesn't lower the blow. Great timing on that hit to prevent the P.I. call and to get this team to fourth down. And the Rebels will line up to boot it away. First punt of the game now looking to pin him back deep. And the punt heads out of bounds, taking the dangerous returner out of play here. Okay, so here comes the LSU offense back on the field. And the quarterback keeps it here. He's brought down, but not before the game to the 42-yard line. 
Well, I think we can all see how tough it is to control this guy in your center today for this defense. But they did a nice job of keeping him contained. But they've got to stay focused. They can't get lazy because we could see him breaking one any moment against this defense. Second down after that run on the previous play. Looking for some space. It's Williams. Did well to avoid a loss there, but it's no gain on the play. Well, Kirk, you played in rivalry games. No shortage of inspiration, but how do you manage the emotion of it all? Well, I think you need great leadership from the team. Sometimes teams don't handle the emotions of it, and the game can get sideways on you. The teams that play the best in rivalry games are the teams that have the best leaders to keep them focused on the task at hand. Can't find anybody on third down. Throws it away, and now fourth down coming up. Boy, third down and short. They decide to throw the football, roll the dice a bit, doesn't work out. Now you're at fourth and short. You got to wonder, with this offensive line and this running back, do you run the football to convert, or do they try to go through the air again? You'll call for the fair catch here. And the Rebels' offense is back out on the field. They did some good things on the last drive, moved it a long way, but eventually stalled out. He moves the ball across the 20 to the 22. Again, makes it second and medium. Takes the handoff again. Tackled behind the line. It's a loss of two. Boy, this defense is strong up front. Linebackers are flying downhill, able to make plays against this run game. Now they get this offense to another third down. Now you pressure that quarterback and try to build on the lead. They're backed up here, trying to make something happen on third and long. To throw, it's dark. Fires it to the wide out. And he finds a wide open receiver. They forgot about him downfield. Tackle is made, but that's good for a first down of the 47. They attack the deep middle of this defense. Could come up with a big play. Nice job giving that quarterback time to throw. Good job of making that read to the middle of the field and working against those safeties. And a big play is the result. The Rebels hustle to the line to crank up the tempo. On the run, it's Amos. The running back has been busy today, but not much to show for it. The defense all over him again. It's LSU on top as we take a break for the quarter. Let's check out the stats now through the opening period. They've flipped ends of the field. We're ready now for the second period. Here's the second down play. Caught over the middle. It's Watkins. They bring him down, but he was fast enough to get that first down yardage. How about the arm strength from this quarterback? He really didn't have any other option than to put it right in there and give it everything that he had. Great timing and a good job of squeezing that in between the defenders. And the Rebels will try to keep this drive moving. They'll go with the ground game here. Running back takes the handoff. And the senior able to make the stop after a short game. Here comes the up-tempo offense. Grab behind the line. It's pre-scoring. He's brought down, but there is a flag on the field. Let's check out this call. Quarterback roughed up. Let's hope he's okay. Automatic first down coming. 
The back's got it. They'll stop him behind the line for a loss of one. Chris, that play just didn't have much of a chance at all from the snap. Quarterback hands this off and just nowhere to go. It's almost like the defense was anticipating the play call. And they put themselves in a position to come up with a nice tackle for a loss. Important second down play coming up. Using his legs, it's Amos. Defense gets him down, but they'll take the gain on that play. And the crowd coming to life here, trying to help this defense down in the red zone. To the air, it's dark, bringing pressure. And the junior able to get home with the sack. A really good job by this defense. The quarterback looked to be trying to work through his progressions to find his open receiver, but before he knew it, he's on his back. And the coach elects to send out the field goal unit. We'll see if he's got the leg from 49 yards out. And that one is no good. And after the miss, still down by seven. Boy, this guy's usually more reliable than this. I thought that was going to be an easy field goal in three points, but instead, he misses, so you walk away with nothing. Bayou Bengals offense is back out on the field. They're coming off a three and out, looking to produce a positive drive here. Grab down the middle. It's Taylor. They make the tackle, but not before. Solid gain on that pass. Offense getting set. Second down play here. He hands it off from the gun. Oh, what a move. Brought down, but not before he gets into enemy territory at the 49. Chris, it feels good to see an LSU team be able to run the football when you know they're going to run. I mean, they've been doing that forever. Go all the way back to Jacob Hester and Kevin Falk. His ability to run the ball and catch out of the backfield. Leonard Fournette. And of course, Clyde Edwards Alaire on that great 2019 team. And now. LSU stable of backs again on this roster, too. The pickup is five yards, so it's second down and five. It's a really good, solid run. I know it's not the flashiest big play, but it's important for your offense to be able to get yards like that on early downs. You stay ahead of the chains, and it opens up the playbook for the second and third down coming up. Second down after that run on the previous play. Running back with the football. They tackle him behind the line, a loss of four. Talking about quickness, that play is absolutely blown up in no time. Chris, I don't know if that's a misassignment by the offensive lineman or just really good instincts there by the defender, but that play is blown up right at the snap. So the offense getting set. This is not where you want to be against this defense. Third and long. Dropping back. We're going to throw for the first down. Going to try to use his legs here. Quarterback gets down to avoid the big hit. Love to see quarterbacks try to keep a play alive. He gave it everything he had here. He came up short of the first down. Boy, he gave him a chance. And here comes the punter onto the field. Looking to kick it away for the second time. And the punt lands out of bounds. Let's see exactly where they'll spot it here. And the Rebels' offense is back out on the field. They need something out of this possession. The last time they settled for a field goal attempt, but then they missed it. They'll tackle him at the 27. And the Rebels hustle to the line to run the hurry up. Quarterback still with the football. That's a nice tackle there by the senior.
So from the 28-yard line, it's a third and manageable here. And they pick up the first on the ground. Brought down, but it's past the line to gain. Boy, those counter plays are tough on a defense. Defense has got to be gap sound. You get so caught up in the base concepts that the offense comes back with a counter play. If you're not sound with your gap integrity, you can give up a big play. The Rebels starting a new series here on first and ten. Handoff running right. Physical run breaks through a tackle. Heads out of bounds after a solid gain, more than enough to pick up a first down. Nothing better than an offense on first down to be able to pick up big, positive yards like that. You can either keep giving it to the back, or it can set up play action and get the defense to come up to the line of scrimmage, and you can throw it over top of it. He'll hand it off. They tackle him behind the line, a loss of four. Well, the play is just blown up by the big fella in the middle, Kirk, showing some quickness for his size. Yeah, we know about his power, but how about his ability to penetrate there? And that's the quickest way to blow up a run game, is that interior penetration. If you're able to break through the middle of that offensive line, then you can create a lot of havoc in the middle. To the air. It's dark. Makes a quick grab. And they get him down after the completion. So we've reached the two-minute warning as this offense tries to take the lead here before halftime. Not going to be easy here. Backed up a long way to go for a first down. And he'll drop back here on third down. Caught over the middle. It's Harris. They make the stop just short of the marker. It's going to be fourth down and inches. Well, a quick short throw here, not able to convert for the first down. You'd love to see that route maybe a little bit deeper to give yourself a better chance, but they come up a little bit short. So now it's decision-making time for the coach. I'd be shocked if they didn't go for it. They'll kick it away here. And the kick angles out of bounds, so no return possible here. And here comes that LSU offense back onto the field. They're looking to build on the lead. They had to punt the football in their last possession. Grab down the middle. It's Lacey. And they've got him down at the three. Big gain on that completion. Boy, nice job here by this offense, creating an opportunity for this receiver to excel after the catch. It's early in this game, so this defense better get their arms around this receiver because he could be a monster today. After the huge play, they're pounding on the door. It's first and goal at the three. And they're trying to punch it in here. And they're able to get him down. So the offense calls a timeout here. That's their first of the half. You know, where the real estate gets tight inside the 10-yard line, you love a play caller who has the ability to either run it or throw it. Because that puts so much pressure on that defensive coordinator to know how to line up. It's not just a one-dimensional attack he's dealing with. All the way to the end zone. Touchdown, Tigers! So it's still early, but this offense beginning to build momentum and build the lead now, Kirk. As we've seen over the years, Chris, good teams know how to use the first quarter to establish the lead, the second quarter to increase the lead, and the final half just to hold on to it. They're following that blueprint perfectly, widening the distance between them and their opponent before we even get to the locker rooms. And they'll set up now for the extra point try. With the extra point, the lead is 14. So the offense gets momentum scoring before halftime. Now the kickoff will see if the defense can get a stop and preserve that momentum. Looks like the returner will try and field this one. And he stopped at the 20. Tried to make something happen, but that's good coverage there. And the Ole Miss offense is back out on the field. 
backed up this close to the end zone in the final minute. Let's see if they just decide to take care of the football and look toward the second half. That one falls incomplete. Good defensive play. Brings up second down. What a hit there by the defender. Tough for the receiver to hold on to the football when he has that kind of contact. Good, clean play by the defense. Incomplete. Second down coming up. Scanning the field. It's dark. Pass complete on a crosser. Timeout is called to talk strategy late in this close game with halftime approaching. A completion good for a first down. The offense working with a new set of downs here. There's the snap, and he's looking to throw. Caught over the middle. It's Wells. Well, you can tell the quarterback knew exactly what he wanted to do with the football. He was going to that in route no matter what. He hits it for a nice game. A completion makes it second down. From the gun, he looks for an open man. And he lofts it toward the sideline. They try a downfield shot. That's a good effort there. But now it's third down. Well, the offense coordinator with the right call, trying to take a shot there, but just poor execution. They couldn't come up with a big play. Let's see if the coach tries it again later, or maybe in the second half. The offense now looking at a third and short in their own 40, trying to keep this drive going. Grab near the sticks. It's Amos. And they wrap him up, but the gain is good enough for a first down. And the offense will quickly spend a timeout here after the play. This offense has gotten going at long last. It's another first and ten. Looking for a deep completion. And that deep shot is caught for a big gain. Four set of bounds after a big gain. This offense set up with a first down. That is great arm strength and accuracy by this quarterback. And let's not forget the wide receiver's job of bringing it in for that big gain. So the offense looking to be efficient here. Not much time remaining before the end of the half. Snapping it from the red zone now. Looking to throw. And he just throws the ball away there. Nobody open. Excellent coverage. So on second down, they'll try it out the field goal unit. Trying to get three before halftime. Pick is up and no good. Still losing by 14 after the miss. That's a missed opportunity for some points here. The way they were moving the football, I thought maybe a touchdown at the very least three points, but instead he shanks it. So they'll just take a knee here, and that will send us to halftime. Some of the crowd hoping for more, but the coach content to take this lead into halftime. Meadows going to wrap up the first half here. Let's kick it now to Kevin Connors with our halftime update. Thanks so much, guys. And I need not tell you, rivalry games always bring out a ton of emotion. And no surprise, we saw just that in the first half today. And there is no better place to start this halftime than by reviewing how this wideout has been a one-man wrecking crew. The kid's been everywhere. And I love how he's willing to go across the middle, but that he also has the Jets to burn these DBs on the deep ball. If this defense wants to actually come back in this one, they better hide his cleats. With that, let's throw it back to the guys to see how this rivalry matchup plays out. And the Rebels will kick this away to start the second half. Return starts from inside the five. And he stopped at the 20. Tried to make something happen, but that's good coverage there. Okay, so here comes the LSU offense back on the field. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Pulls it in. It's Williams. And the defense swarms not much of a gain on that completion. Hey, it's a game, but you get the sense that this offense wanted a little bit more from that play. Pass caught, second down now. On the ground, it's Williams. 
Tackle made after a solid game to spot the ball at the 34. Well, these are the type of runs that begin to wear down your defense psychologically. Already have the lead, come out with a nice big gain, and this defense is thinking, oh no, here we go again. Really nice statement here to get this second half started. And they'll go right back to him on first down. Tackled, but only after picking up a fresh set of downs. Well, here's the first play to start this second half, and it's really more the same of what we saw in the first half. Really no need to make drastic changes. What you're doing in that first half gave you the lead. Just keep working on it. LSU getting set with a first and ten now. Looking to pass. It's Nussmeyer. Receiver makes the grab. To get him down, but not before he gets to the plus 38. Well, it's a great completion here. Quarterback puts this ball on the money. And, and, and when you talk about LSU and you talk about the history, it's easy to bring up Joe Burrow in 2019. But, Chris, you've been following this as long as I have. You know that when LSU is really dangerous, they get consistent play from the quarterback. It doesn't have to be Burrow, but just a guy that can be efficient, be a good leader, and complement the running game. And right now, you're starting to see that from this team. Good completion. Now, can you do it consistently? Because if you can, with the athletes they have around that position, they become a real threat. Now it's second down here. Shotgun formation. Here's an inside give. Ball carrier tackled there. So now it's third and short from the 30. Chance for the defense to make a play here and perhaps force a field goal attempt. Can he make it to the marker? They'll stop him behind the line for a loss of one. So a field goal attempt coming up now. Trying to knock it through from 48 yards away. And he's got it from 48 yards out, showing off the big leg. So after building this big lead, they're set to kick it off. Fields it inside the five-yard line. Makes it to the 16. That's good coverage there. And the Ole Miss offense is back out on the field. The last drive was a little demoralizing. They stalled and then missed a field goal. An inside give now from the shotgun. They'll tackle him out across the 20. Well, throughout this game, they've shown a number of their base run plays in the first half, so it's good to mix in the counter here in the second half just in case the defense is starting to over-pursue. Keep an eye on if they pull that play again maybe later in this game. And the Rebels will hustle to the line to run the hurry-up offense. Quarterback will throw this out of the RPO. They bring him down, but that's a solid gain on the play. Great execution on the RPO. Quarterback does a nice job as he's putting the ball into the belly of the back, making sure to read his key. This defense was determined. They came up to stop the run. Quarterback saw it, pulled it out, hit the quick slant right behind it for some great yards. Quarterback pulls the ball. It's a keeper. Fights through the tackler. Well, there's just so many things happening on these read option plays, and they happen fast. This defense has done a good job of trying to prevent this quarterback from hitting the big play. He gets some yards here, but at least he didn't get out for a big gainer. Offense right to the line, cranking up the tempo. One man to the backfield, and he'll get the football. Goes backwards, losing three yards there.
Third down. The offense desperately needs a conversion here, trailing in the third quarter. On the run, it's Amos. Goes backwards, losing three yards there. That's a great play all round by this defense. Your first level defenders hold their own at the point of attack, allowing the second and third level players to roam free and make the tackle close to the line of scrimmage. The Rebels will send the punt team onto the field. With the return, it's Thomas. And the returner is tackled by this punt coverage team. And that Bayou Bengals offense is back out on the field. They've got the lead, but had to settle for a field goal last time out. They'd love to find the end zone here. They'll stop him behind the line for a loss of one. Offense getting set. It's second down. To throw, it's Nussmeyer. Defense is coming after him. Receiver makes the catch. He's brought down, but not before getting into enemy territory at the plus 47. Quarterback sees that this defense is dropping way back in zone coverage, so he does the right thing. Gets it underneath to that track route and picks up a first down. Pass complete for a first down. The offense gets a fresh set of downs. From the shotgun, it's a handoff. Now they've got him, but not before a solid gain on the ground there. Well, let's give credit to the offensive line here. They went with a run blitz. The offensive line sees it, picks it up, gives them enough room to pick up some solid yards. Second down after that run on the previous play. They'll run it from the gun. The junior able to bring him down quickly. Critical third down play for this offense right here. They'll try to run for the first down. They bring him down to the 27. This offense really threatening now. You know, everybody always wants to talk about quarterbacks today and receivers. And don't get me wrong, that's a big part of the evolution of the game and where we are. Man, for me, as a fan, when I'm watching a game, there's just something satisfying about the teams and the offenses that still have backs that can carry the ball and come up with plays like that. Move those sticks and keep this drive going. Second down after that previous play. They'll try to run it with the option. He'll toss it to the back. And they'll stop him after a short game. So now it's third and short from the 23. Potential four down territory. Let's see what the third down call is. Send the back in motion. Fires it to the wide out. He makes the grab. They make the tackle quickly, but the offense set up with a first and goal for the seven. Now that's what I call coming through for your team in a pressure situation. Great read, got the ball where it needed to go, and now you're set up to get six. The offense will line up, chance for a couple more plays before the end of the quarter. First and goal, they'll try to run it in. Stop for no gain there. That'll do it for the third quarter. The final quarter coming up next. And so far, we've been treated to a duel of big play wide receivers. These guys have been putting on a show, piling up the highlights through three quarters. So one final quarter to play. It's going to take a lot to turn this game around, but strange things do happen in college football. And off inside, looking for the touchdown. Runner finding some space there. That's a solid gain on the ground. 
I know this defense worked very hard at halftime to come up with answers on how to try to slow down this running back after the big first half, and he's already at it again. The offense two for two on third downs this drive. This one is third and goal. They'll try to run this one in. Touchdown, LSU. And this one is getting ugly. Well, the energy really building now, Kirk. If they're not careful, this could get ugly. Chris, this offense has been impressive the entire game. And one of the great things about rivalry games is you'll never forget this kind of performance. And now the try here for the extra point. The extra point is good, and they stretch the lead a little bit more. Getting set to kick the ball off now. Looks like he'll try to make a play with the return. Solid coverage there. They get him at the 15. That's where the offense will take over. And the Rebels offense back out on the field. The last drive, they came up empty. Had to kick it away. Can they come up with something here? On the junior, gets home making a sack there. Man, how impressive have these guys been in this football game? I really expected to see a very different outcome with the hype of this quarterback and the way he's played most of this year. But this defense has held him under 200 yards passing. They've got a nice lead, and they are not sitting back and resting on their laurels. They're applying more pressure, and they come up with a sack here. That sack sets up a second down and long. Going to run it. It's Amos. And the runner brought down after just a short game. So a tricky situation here. Third and very long inside your own 20. How much of a risk do you take? You know this defense could be very aggressive at this moment. Tries the right with a quick throw. And he's got it. Tackle at the 35. Good enough for a first down. Chris, here we are in the fourth quarter. These guys are trailing. Had been a great day. But with this quarterback, he's as gifted as anybody in the country. You never count these guys out. And the Rebels will have first and ten here. Scanning the field. It's dark. Throws it to the right. Makes the catch downfield. They bring him down, but that is a huge play for this passing game. Big game. Finally, good for them. They come up with a big play like this. Let's face it. Offense has been at a premium for these guys. You wonder where plays like this have been all game long. And the Rebels look to keep this drive moving. In the red area, it's Amos. Coming to the line on second down. This is important. They want to avoid a third and long. Quarterback drops back. We're going to test the secondary. Looks to the left. Pass caught. Brought down at the seven, but the completion moves him closer to the goal line. Well, anytime an offensive coordinator calls a wide receiver screen, he's trying to get offensive linemen out in front of the receiver to create a wall so that receiver can pick a lane to run through. How about the defense here, though? That's called team pursuit and swarming to the football. They didn't give him any lanes, so not much yards downfield for the receiver. Well, a field goal here does them no good, so the offense stays on the field. They'll go for it. 
Fourth down, looking to throw for it. Looking to the end zone. Grab near the sticks. It's Harris. And he makes it into the end zone. Touchdown, Rebels. They'll go for a two-point conversion. The quarterback's got it on the option. Pitches to the back. And he's got it. The two-point conversion to make this a 16-point lead. Back within two scores. Kickoff team is on the field. Let's see if they give the returner a chance to bring this one back. He's going to return it from near the goal line. And they've got the returner corralled. And here comes that LSU offense back onto the field. They had a brilliant touchdown drive last time, mixing the run and the pass. Can they keep that going again? Looking for a gap, it's Williams. Tackled behind the line, it's a loss of two. Boy, these obvious running situations are very tough when you're working with the lead late in the game because you know the defense is going to stack the line of scrimmage, make it as difficult as possible for you to run the football. So nice job there by the defense. They're trying to punch that ball out, do anything they can at all to get the ball back. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. It's a big game before he goes out of bounds. It'll move the sticks more than enough for a first down. Hey, you got to do what you got to do. You got to rely on that offensive line in the running game here to be able to secure a victory. Good call, and just keep working that clock. First and ten now for the offense. Ball we'll handed off. Solid run. They'll bring it down at the 28 yard line. Second down after that run on the previous play. And the quarterback keeps it on the option. Tackled behind the line. It's a loss of two. Man, oh man, was the defense ready for this play. The quarterback just searching for anywhere to go, looking for daylight, but couldn't find anywhere to go in the keeper. The offense now facing a third and long from the 26. Got to avoid a mistake here. Back to pass. It's Nussmeyer. Testing the defense with a throw downfield. That one falls incomplete. They tried to press it deep, but now it brings up fourth down. Chris, I just don't know about this call. I like the aggressive approach, but at this point, late in the game, playing with the lead, third down and long, maybe you run the ball. You know, work that clock. Continue to think about the big picture. Now you're facing fourth down and long, and I think you got to punt it away and hope the defense can secure a victory. And the return man decides to signal fair catch. And the powerful Ole Miss offense is back out on the field. And they'll run it out of the shotgun. The gain is three. Now it's second down and seven. The Rebels hustle to the line to run the hurry up. Quarterback wants to throw it on second down. Grab down the middle. It's pre-scoring. Big man finally brought down by the cornerback. That was a tough assignment. Well, Chris, here we are in the fourth quarter. You're down by a couple possessions. Yeah, completion is good, but truly the two most important things, getting the ball downfield to your receivers and making sure they're working to get out of bounds to preserve that clock to be able to get a score, get the ball back, and have a chance to win this game. Quarterback moving out of the pocket, trying to create. On the move, but can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Chris, that's on the offensive line right there. They definitely have to be feeling responsible because it's almost like you didn't protect your little brother back there. The offense stays on the field, down multiple possessions. Easy choice.
Trying for a fourth down completion. And he's going to float this one to the right side. It's incomplete. The defense makes a big fourth down stop. Fresh set of downs for the offense. First down. Hand off to the back. They'll keep the clock moving. Well, about the only thing that went right for the offense there, Chris, is they kept the ball in bounds to try to keep that clock moving. The defense does their job. They're just trying to think of any way at all to get that ball out and get the ball back to their offense to have a shot here. And that's the two-minute warning as this offense tries to work the clock, getting closer now to an impressive victory. Second down play coming up. Give it to the back again. Goes backwards, losing three yards there. And now a timeout taken by the defense, trying to preserve as much clock as possible for their offense. The offense was given a short field. Now can the defense come up with a huge stop here on third down? Back to throw. It's Nussmeyer. Running out of time in the pocket. Junior steps up and makes an impact play. And now it's the defense that calls timeout here trying to get organized and preserve as much clock as possible. Special teams on the field now. Here comes a punt. And that one will bounce into the end zone for a touchback. First down here for this offense. Looking out throwing here to start the drive. And now in the final couple minutes, here's a deep shot. Deep ball is caught for a huge gain here. And he takes it in for the score. Touchdown, Ole Miss. Uh, you know, this touchdown it actually gives them a chance now that they're down 10. Really critical. You pull out the two-point play. You got to hit it to make it a one-possession game. Score the touchdown, but need a two-point conversion to make it a one-possession game. On the ground, trying to muscle it across the line, and he's brought down there. Now, the defense wasn't quite able to keep him out of the end zone for the touchdown, but how about the job of just having a short memory? Just put that out of your mind, rally to this football, and keep them short of the two-point conversion. And looks like the hands team were able to recover the football. Okay, so here comes the LSU offense back on the field. They're trying to build on their lead. They were forced to punt on the last possession. Looking for some space. It's Williams. They'll stop him behind the line for a loss of one. And now a timeout taken by the defense trying to preserve as much clock as possible for their offense. Second down play coming up for this offense. Keep it on the ground. There's the handoff. Defense stops him, but that's a solid game. Linebacker shifting around now. They come to the line. A long way to go for the first down, but needing this crucial conversion right now. Looking to throw. It's Nussmeyer. A sack in the play could not escape the pass rush. Well, they're making this offensive line really think and communicate. Bringing different blitzes. This time, the outside linebacker gets to the quarterback and comes up with a big sack for the D. And the punt team makes its way onto the field. He's on to boot it away now. And the punt goes out of bounds. The officials now will mark the spot. And wow, listen to this crowd noise. This stadium is vibrating. That's why this is such a tough place for visitors to play. And with nobody open, he chooses to just throw it away. Offense getting set up. Here's second down.
After the incompletion on first down, looking to throw it again. Pressure is coming. Eludes the rush. He's going to take off. And they wrap him up and bring him down in what is the final play of the game. 